Hi, I'm Chris Hague and this is the Fiddle Channel and today we're going to do a song called If you're going to play in Texas, you've got to have a fiddle in the band. This is a song made famous by Alabama and um, it was a request for Ron. Thank you for asking for this Ron. Um, incidentally if you're enjoying my videos do please consider joining me on Patreon because that's what keeps them coming. So this song, typical country song, it's got lots of bits to it and um, I'm going to talk about your approach to it, how you actually play it because I don't think it's a great idea to play exactly like the original but we'll come to that. So it was recorded in 1984 and um, it's a story of how the band went to Texas and started playing and someone yelled out from the back, <laughs> where's the fiddle? And so they wrote a song which included fiddle and um, uh, it keeps Texans very happy. Let's start off with the intro, which, uh, and in fact that the, the fiddle doesn't come in until halfway through. So he, immediately you have the question, well, what do we do for the first half? And this depends on who you're playing with. If you're playing with Alabama, then <laughs> you shut up until you're supposed to come in. If you're playing with an Alabama covers band, then you shut up until you're supposed to come in. But if you're playing with a regular country band or with maybe just a duo, then probably a good idea to come in um, pretty close to the start. So the intro, uh, we just have four bars of nothing much happening. It's just a chord four bars and then you've got the unaccompanied chorus uh, so let's play um, that intro and the unaccompanied chorus and I will entertain and amuse you by singing along to that chorus and then we'll see where we go from there one two three four <laughs> If you're gonna play in Texas, you gotta have a fiddle in the band. The guitar is hot, but not for Louisiana man. So rising up that bowl, play the blunders all dance. If you're gonna play in Texas, you gotta have a fiddle in the band. So that's your intro, which as I say, uh, generally has no fiddle on it. And uh, you may well consider it should have no, <laughs> no fiddle, fiddle singing on it. But, um, so it's good to know the melody. I think it's even good to learn the words, even if you're never actually going to play the melody and sing the words. Just to get you properly uh, orientated within the song. Okay, so it's then into the verse and chorus, which are almost the same in terms of chords. Um, so let's play uh, through the verse and I'll play long notes through that verse. verse and notice that I played quite a lot of open string drones on that and um, the, op the, the notes I was playing for the A for the D chord and the A chord are the same but I think it's a good idea to play a second finger and a first finger just to emphasize the difference between the D chord and the A chord. There's loads of different variations you could put in uh, as notes for the verse and the chorus like that um, and you could do um, shuffles. That's the Nashville shuffle. You could do the Georgia shuffle. Like that. You could do offbeat chops. You could do uh, modern chops. Let's do the chorus 
um, and this time I will do some shuffles over the chorus. is a little um, down, 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 that's a little guitar fill that comes at the end, which you could well manage without, uh, if there's a guitarist you should leave it to them, um, but it's quite nice. Then there's a little guitar break. Which again, I think a lot of people would leave out. It's important to notice the, the chord sequence of the verse and chorus, they are slightly different. So the verse doesn't go to the F-sharp minor, but both have an extended E7 chord in the middle of the verse and of the chorus. So watch out for that. Um, so then we've got another second verse, and here is where the fiddle actually starts. We have the vocal line uh, when Jeff opens up his case. And I have to admit that I'm not enough of a... Um, uh, aficionado of the band to know what else Jeff plays, whether, <laughs> whether he comes on just with a fiddle or whether he is, I don't know, a piano player or a bass player or something, but he opens up his fiddle and the crowd, the Texan crowd goes crazy when he does that. So at, the, at that point in the verse you want to do something like this and you get the hoops and the hollers. Um, got another verse, another chorus, and then we have a solo. Um, I'm going to give you both, there are two fiddle solos, I'm going to give you both of them, and then I'm going to tell you why, why you shouldn't learn them. <laughs> but uh, let's just go through, I'll put the backing on, and I will play these solos slow. One, two, three. <laughs> actually goes round and round a few times at the end. Three, four... So, is it worth learning these solos? And I have to say no. Um, uh, whilst I hate to criticise another fiddle player's excellent work, <laughs> this is what I would call noodling. And I suspect that if he played it again, he would play it completely differently. And I was playing it really slow there, and I found it difficult to follow. The reason being that it's just not very melodic. It's just kind of running up and down um, the chords to no great effect. That's my humble opinion. There's, there's one really good lick in there, which is that one. And that's well worth learning. That's in the second chorus, uh, the second solo. Um, but I personally would find this a great deal easier to play just uh, making it up as I go along. Just kind of following the chords uh, rather than trying to remember this. That's certainly not the case with a lot of fiddle solos in a lot of songs. If uh, they're memorable and simple, then you should learn them. If the audience is going to know the solo, then you should play them. If I, I defy any, I defy the most um, ardent of fans down in Texas to know every note of this fiddle solo. <laughs> so I'm just going to give you a... Um, a much faster and much easier improvised solo on that.
So that's much more fun. It's it's more personal. It will it'll work a lot better in my opinion, assuming you've spent the several years of work that it needs to get familiar with how to pour solos out like that. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. Uh, as usual with with these kind of country songs, it's not a matter of learning the part from beginning to end. It's more about a matter of understanding the song and working out what you're going to do with it in the context of who you are playing with. If you enjoyed this then um, I will send you, if you want, a copy of the sheet music that I've used, uh, a PDF if you join the Fiddle channel. And if you join me on Patreon, which I remind you is what keeps these videos coming, then I can also send you uh, all 350 of my PDFs in one go. Uh, thank you for watching, I will see you again soon.